Greetings, everyone. Hi, hi, hi. I want to welcome you for this Thursday evening training from wherever you are joining us. I'm sure there are many people from here on our continent and people from further afield. But no matter where you are, a warm welcome to you for our Thursday evening training. As always, it's my pleasure to, to be here with you. And for those maybe who are joining us for the first few times, let me introduce myself. My name is Betty Olo. I'm a director in Neolife, for many years a distributor, and uh, very, very glad to be in this business because it has brought, it has meant a lot in our life as a couple, my husband and myself, as well as in our family. And uh, I think each time we, we come together, we should always remind ourselves of the good fortune we have had to have been given this opportunity of Neolife. And so from wherever you are, I just want to welcome you. And uh, I expect and hope that the session today is going to be beneficial to yourself in your personal capacity, uh, as well as in your business and in your family circle, and indeed in uh, the lives of all those people whom you come across. Because our business is something we carry with, our, with us wherever we go trying to be a positive change in people's lives. So if you you might have noticed with your invite for today's training, I'm going to speak about joint health. And of course, our joints are uh, very important. We speak about them in maybe in other, other sessions. But today, I thought I would specifically speak about our joints because sometimes we tend to overlook them. We don't talk about them much but they are a very important reason why we are able to move. So if you can think about it, our ancestors had to move for very long periods every day. They would be going hunting for food, searching and gathering for food. They would be walking long distances, either for the purpose of socializing, maybe escaping from danger and so on, which tells us that we are actually built to move and they have the modern habit of sitting for prolonged periods every day is actually not the way we have we are supposed to to be and for that reason we have to be cautious about incorporating movement in our day to day life so uh, our joints actually if we take good care of them and uh, we are fortunate maybe not to have a uh, serious injuries or a serious illness can keep us moving for an entire lifetime. And I think many of us have come across older people who are still very flexible and able to move and quite agile. And this tells us that actually our joints are supposed to be, uh, to, to have the longevity of uh, our entire lives. Unfortunately, we find more and more that many of us will struggle, especially in the later years, sometimes even in the middle years with uh, joint problems and struggling to move. So we have become aware over time because a lot of work has gone into creating uh, the awareness that we need cardiovascular exercise, we need to build muscles and maintain our, our musculature as the years go by because it is very important for our health. However, what we sometimes are not so aware of is the importance of maintaining flexibility in our joints and the full range of motion which our joints are supposed to have. This, uh, this is also an important part of our activities because it safeguards our ability to move, the ability to do our work, and also to enjoy a healthy, active life. So when you think about uh, the importance of exercise, the importance of cardiovascular exercises for uh, the health of our heart, when we think about maintaining good muscle to keep our bodily strength, we should not forget our joints because all of this, uh, the movement of our skeleton is only possible because we have joints. So as usual, let me look a little fast at the lifestyle side of things. So one of the greatest hazards to our health and our longevity is, as I've said before, habitual prolonged sitting. So if we sit for long periods daily or frequently, 
then it will have uh, a detrimental effect on our, our health, our movement, and even our longevity. And what contributes to this uh, new style of uh, prolonged sitting or sedentary lifestyle? One of the reasons is that an increasing number of jobs and an increasing number of people can do most of their daily work while seated. So if you think about years, before, years ago, let's say when I was still a child, a lot of what we needed to do required a lot of movement. You needed to go out and fetch water from the river. You needed to get, go to the forest to fetch firewood. You needed to spend a day maybe tilling the land. You, you needed to uh, maybe chase your chicken, kill it, and cook it, and so on. So a lot of movement was involved in just day-to-day -day life. But uh, more and more now we find that we can do a lot from sitting. If you can imagine that you and I right now, we are simply sitting, staring at a screen and um, speaking into a screen and we are doing our work in that way. In fact, if you were, for those older distributors, you can think about how much the new life business has changed. There was a time that the opportunity of doing so much just using our phones and our laptops and iPads and so on was not so great. We could not do so much with them. But now we find more and more, we, we get our orders just by clicking a few buttons here and there. We get deliveries and so on. So that is one of the reasons why prolonged sitting has become a part of our life. We can do a lot without having to get up and move around. Then another reason is that we have an easy and efficient transport system in many places, of course, not in all places, and here on our continent, we know that there are places where transport is still a struggle, but in many places, transport is easy and efficient, which reduces the need to walk for long distances. And we are able to get from place to place by, air, by, by airplanes, we can get from place to place by cars and by trains. All this means that those long distance movements are no longer really a part of our lives. In fact, most of the time, if we are walking for a long period, it will probably be uh, for recreation, like those who go on hikes, let's say those who, who jog and so on. Of course, we also still have many people on our continent who have got to walk long distances to go to work, to go to school and so on. So it is a mixed bag, but as you can see, the, the advent of transport has changed the need for walking long distances. Then the other reason I wanted to mention is, of course, schooling has played a role in making sitting a uh, part of our lives because from the moment a child is admitted in school, they are encouraged to sit still and pay attention. And this goes on for all the years when they'll be at school, during the, the class, the, the teaching hours, the time they are sitting in class, they would be sitting and the teacher will probably not be amused if a child keeps on getting up and moving around except maybe during the short breaks that they are given in the course of the day, which means that we grow up through school being uh, encouraged to sit still and pay attention and do our work so that we actually see it as a good thing to do. Then it comes as a surprise that now as we grow older, that the same sitting still and paying attention and doing our work can actually be a source of health problems for us. But that is the way it is. So we need to think about how to mitigate against this necessity of sitting for long periods. And one of the things that I think can be easily incorporated to help us against this is walking. Walking is an excellent movement or exercise which does not have a very high impact on our joints and can be done at all stages of our life. So Young children can walk, older people can walk, and even many old people can walk, which means that if we take it as one of our exercises, we can actually do it for the majority of our lives. And uh, it can be something that we can incorporate into our daily activities, maybe during lunch hour, if we work in a sedentary job, we can take time during our lunch hour to walk around, to move around, and uh, let's say if, if possible, we can also run some errands on foot where possible. We can uh, maybe park a little far away from where we are going so that we get an opportunity to walk to uh, from, and from the car. 
And where, whenever it is convenient, we can opt for using stairs instead of elevators. So where possible, we should also include flexibility exercises. There are specialized exercises that are targeted towards our flexibility. Many of us maybe have heard of yoga or Pilates, which uh, help us to exercise but emphasize uh, flexibility and stretching. We have things like Tai Chi and calisthenics, which also we should incorporate in our exercise plans with the idea that they give us the opportunity to extend our joints and the ability of our joints to move through the full range. Because uh, just to, to explain a little bit, every joint has got a range over which it can move. And if uh, we don't uh, do exercises to keep on developing this and maintaining it, we may find that our joints become stiffer and stiffer and the range of movement becomes narrower and narrower. And this we can usually notice when you look at little children, how flexible they are and how they are able to contort themselves into all kinds of uh, shapes and movements. Whereas as you get to around my age, you may find that uh, it is much more difficult to do some of those things, but um, that can be mitigated against by doing exercises that maintain at least the majority of our range of movement. We may lose some of the range, but we should try to maintain the, the majority of it. So what works against us uh, in our joint health? So what are some of the causes of joint problems? Of course, there, there are obvious things like injuries. Maybe something happens to us and we are injured and this can uh, affect our joints and make it uh, difficult for us to, to use that joint or to move it as comfortably as before the injury. But in addition to that, over time, we have wear and tear where we find that our joints can get worn out and uh, with time, they may become painful or inflamed and unable to, to, to move as freely and as extensively as uh, when we had not lived for a certain period of time because we were still younger or we had not uh, had some of the issues, dietary issues, illnesses that can uh, lead to this problem. Another cause for joint problems is inflammation. So inflammation is something we often talk about that happens in our bodies. There is a type of inflammation that is part of healing. For example, if something hits us or if we hurt ourselves in some way, the first thing we notice is uh, that the place is going to swell and become a bit hot. That is inflammation. But that kind of inflammation is part of healing. It's the first step our body takes to heal the injury. However, there is another kind of inflammation that uh, is uh, called systemic inflammation that is uh, throughout our body. And when it is chronic, then it means that uh, it's not a first step to anything. It becomes like the norm of our, our body. And that can be due to illness. For example, things like arthritis can cause inflammation in a joint. It can also be due to a diet. And also autoimmune illnesses are associated with prolonged inflammation. So inflammation can be another, another cause of joint problems. Then a fourth one is excessive body weight, which puts a strain on our joints. And if you think of some of our uh, bad load bear, weight bearing joints, sorry. So our weight bearing joints will particularly be affected by this because the heavier we are, the more the weight that those joints have to carry. I'll mention this just now in, again in a short while. Then the last thing I wanted to mention and of course, it's not that these are not the only ones, but the one I want the few I wanted to mention. Some kinds of medication can also speed up the wearing out of our joints. So if we are on certain kinds of medication for prolonged periods, they can also contribute to joint problems. So when you're taking some of this medication, you can look at the side effects. And if you see that one of them is a, a joint or cartilage problems you might want to reconsider maybe to change to a different type or to not use them if possible for prolonged periods. Then uh, how do activities benefit our joints? It is well established that gentle exercise after meals will help in uh, improving our digestion as well as our metabolism, that is our energy producing activity. 
And this uh, good digestion and good metabolism will be useful in maintaining a healthy body weight, which we have already seen it is important to maintain a healthy body weight because if we do not um, maintain a healthy weight and we become overweight or obese, what happens is that some of our joints, the weight bearing joints, for example, our hips, our knees and our ankles are going to start suffering because of being pressed down by a high weight. So if you can imagine how small our ankle is, our ankles are, and then if we put on, let's say 20 or 30 kilograms, then it means that that very small joint still has to carry that much larger weight, which means that we'll start noticing uh, imbalances, uh, uh, swellings and pains and difficulties in moving the joints. So another, yet another reason for us to keep on trying to maintain a healthy body weight by all the lifestyle um, choices we are always talking about so that uh, we do not overstrain our hips, our knees, and ankles, amongst other joints. Then exercise also helps to maintain physical strength, because of course, even as years are passing by, we need to maintain the physical strength that we will use for going about our day-to-day -day business. Exercise also helps in maintaining bone density and prevents joint problems, because sorry, joint problems that are caused by weak or imbalanced muscles. Just to mention that most of our muscles work in pairs. So if you think about something like the arm, we have muscles at the front of our arms and at the back of our arms. They work together in opposite. So one set of, of muscles will, will uh, fold the arm or bend the arm. The other set is going to straighten the arm. So that means that these join, these muscles have to be balanced so that they work well together. When one, either one set is too weak or too much stronger than the other, what will happen is that there will be a muscle imbalance and such an imbalance actually is one of the causes of joint problems. Then uh, the other thing is that activity and uh, exercise helps to improve circulation everywhere and that includes within our joints. This means that by being active, the, the fluids that lubricate our joints and bring nourishment to them is going to be kept going. So by being active, we are going to lubricate and nourish our joints through the movement of uh, the joint itself. This will help in maintaining the flexibility of the joint as well as uh, repairing and healing it. And you will uh, notice maybe if you've ever had your, your hand or leg in a plaster, that if it is kept in a straight position where you are not able to move it, when you start moving it, you notice that the muscles are, are becoming smaller, the bone might become a little bit weaker and the joint might be stiffer. So movement is actually very useful for the help of the, for the health of the joints themselves. Also, we notice as we grow older, I think I've already mentioned this, we can also lose some of our natural flexibility and become stiffer. And for that reason, even as the years are passing, we should not neglect exercises that help us to maintain our flexibility. Other exercises such as skipping rope and trampoline jumping are important for maintaining our balance. So again, as uh, time passes, we may notice that our sense of balance is not very good and we should have exercises that help to sustain those as well as coordination and so on because these can deteriorate as we grow older. And some of the injuries we incur as older people is because our sense of balance starts being poorer and we can uh, easily fall and uh, get some serious injuries. So this will reduce, so uh, doing some of these exercises will reduce loss of balance and will also help us to avoid falling and injuring ourselves. Then now let us look at our Neolife supplements and the important role that they play in joint health. So I just will mention three. One of the ways is, that pro is by protecting joints from wear and tear. So some of the supplements are protective because they protect the joints from that 
wear and tear that takes place over time. Because remember, our joints are always working in one way or another when we are moving. Then another way is that uh, our supplements help to reduce instances of injury. So we can uh, have, we can use the supplements in building a stronger skeleton, which is going to be better at avoiding injuries. And of course, this is not totally, some, some injuries are of course accidental. Some as a, are as a result of weaknesses of different type. And then the third one is uh, that our supplements also provide us with the nutrients that we need to repair the injuries themselves when they occur. Because as we know, we are not always able to avoid injuries, but when they do occur, our bodies would need certain of the supplements and uh, dietary nutrients to help in uh, repairing those injuries. So the supplements that I will recommend are a number of them. Again, you, it does not mean that we have to take all of the seven that I'm going to mention, but we can choose some of them as part of our regular supplementation. But however, in, in uh, situations where we are specifically struggling with joint problems, we might need to take the majority of them. Or if we are getting on in years and we are noticing a certain shakiness in our skeleton. So the first is Neolife Shake, which provides us with a full range of amino acids. These amino acids will help for maintaining and the self-repair of our joints and other tissues, of course. So we are always repairing the tissues in our bodies because they keep on breaking down and dying off. And this is the same with our joints. So the tissues that make up a joint are things like cartilage, ligaments, and um, tendons. All of these will are made from uh, combinations of different uh, nutrients, of which a majority is actually made from amino acids. So protein type of tissues. Then uh, we also have omega-3 salmon oil, one of our superstar supplements. This one will counteract infl inflammatory response in our bodies. And this, the responses can be due to injuries. It can be due to certain things in our diet that is actually inflaming our system, or it can also be due to illness. So omega-3 salmon oil, very, very helpful in resolving inflammation. And we know from our previous sessions that there are many, many uh, lifestyle related illnesses that are driven by this inflammation. So this is one that uh, we should use as part of our daily supplementation because it will help us in very many different uh, aspects of our health. Then the third one I would like to add there is uh, Calmat. I can also put there multi-mineral because we do know that multi-mineral is a broad range of mineral supplements. So these mineral supplements will provide us with the material that we need for building bone, teeth, and blood, and other types of tissues. So these ones uh, are also very important for all of us, especially those who are sports people, those maybe who are struggling with the scale, problems with our skeleton, whether it is our joints, our bones, and so on. And also for people who are growing, young people who are still growing very rapidly, will need to incorporate this in their supplementation program. And in that way, ensure that we have the material that is needed for growing, as well as for laying down new tissues where they break down, whether as a result of the passage of time, or as a result of sports and uh, such activities. So multimineral alfalfa or Calmag also. Then uh, the fourth one will be full motion, a very excellent supplement, which specifically targets the building, the, the providing us with the nutrients we require to repair and rebuild cartilage. So we, we are aware of course that cartilage is that slippery material that is found covering the ends of our bones and coating many of our bones. It is slippery so as to enhance flexibility and uh, the smooth movement of bones and, uh, and joints within themselves. So uh, full motion is going to help very much in um, this area because it will provide us with those nutrients 
that uh, help to maintain and repair and rebuild the cartilage. Then we have vitamin C, and I usually add here or flavonoid complex because our flavonoid complex does contain some vitamin C. But these two supplements are very useful in the repairing and the making of the tissues that are involved in our joints. So for example, collagen is an important part of uh, our, our tendons, our ligaments, and our cartilage. And the, the making of collagen requires the presence of vitamin C. So I know that uh, I, some years ago, there was a great craze about collagen on the internet. But some of the, the things that we are not aware about is that we, we, collagen does not exist in isolation. It is part of other things going on in our bodies. So when our bodies are building collagen, it does need vitamin C. And that is why vitamin C and flavonoid complex play an important role in the maintaining and repairing and building of the tissues involved in our joints. Then the other one I wanted to mention was vitamin D. Uh, so vitamin D is another very important supplement. Again, if we are living in um, most of our continent of Africa, that we can get good sun exposure for most of the year, of course, sometimes in the year and during certain weather, there might not be enough. But uh, if we do notice for one reason or another that we do not get enough sun exposure, then we definitely do need to supplement with vitamin D because vitamin D is a very, very important vitamin for our health. It plays a role in a broad, broad spectrum of uh, our bodily activities, everything from our immune system to our hormonal system, and again, to the absorption of calcium. So calcium, as we know, is used in the building of bones, in the building of teeth, in our, um, our nervous system, and so on. And uh, in order to absorb and utilize calcium correctly, we need adequate vitamin D. So if we know that maybe because we, we work in a, a building for long hours where we do not get sun exposure, then of course we should, con or maybe if we are a dark skinned person living in a temperate climate, you may need to supplement with vitamin D because uh, your dark skin could be protecting you from uh, the sun that is available and that way you will not be getting as you will not your skin will not be making as much vitamin d as it could if you are lighter skinned then the last supplement i want to mention here is magnesium magnesium complex is uh, another very important supplement that plays Im important roles in many aspects of our health and in this case we are thinking about magnesium because it helps to ease muscle soreness, and also to support good quality sleep, amongst other things. And we know that during good sleep is when our tissues are being repaired and rebuilt. So by using magnesium, we are going to enhance the quality of our sleep and also to ease the soreness in our muscles. So those are some of the supplements that uh, I would recommend for our joint health. And uh, as I said, um, you can check which ones particularly target the issue that you want to deal with. But uh, in, the, in the case of things like Neolife Shake, Omega-3 Salmon Oil, Calmag, and uh, Vitamin C, D, they are part of our regular supplementation. Then I see I've got uh, maybe one minute left there and I can uh, touch on a question I had about uh, osteoarthritis. So we know that we have two kinds of arthritis. So the one we are speaking about is not the rheumatoid one, is the bone arthritis, which uh, is a result of wearing out of our cartilage. It can be as a result of aging or as a result of certain types of uh, medication that uh, can be used, uh, can be overused if we are taking them daily. And it can also be maybe as a result of injury or muscle imbalances. So uh, osteoarthritis also comes as a result of repetitive use of a joint. Let us say you are a tennis player or a golf player, you may be using the same set 
of muscles and the joints over and over again in your sport. And this can lead to uh, arthritis in the joints that are involved. So for, for arthri osteoarthritis, we recommend full motion. We also recommend provitality and Calmag. If uh, the budget is tight, then uh, from the provitality, we can at least take omega-3 salmon oil. And in addition to that, full motion and Calmag. So, uh, so there, I think that with that question, the remainder of the questions will probably have uh, a Q&A at the beginning of April. Uh, I just wanted to also give you a heads up that um, next, Thursday, next Thursday is going to be the Easter week, which means that uh, we shall not be having our regular training for that one day because we shall be occupied in our Easter worship period. So for that reason, we shall not be able to be with you. But of course, the, for the week after that, we shall be happy, God willing, to once again uh, have our regular training session. So I want to thank you very much for having spent this time with uh, us. And I hope that the session on joint health has been beneficial and you'll find ways in which to incorporate some of this information into your um, base of knowledge, into the information you give to people you come across and into the way that you go about building your business. Because as you know, in our business, our success relies on helping other people, whether in terms of improving their health or improving their financial situation. So thank you very much. Let me hand you over to Pascal, who is standing by to take you through the next session. Thank you very much, Betty, on joints. Sometimes I, 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 I don't take... Uh, it's quite easy not to appreciate the role that your joints play in your life. I mean, for every movement you have, you need very good joints. So um, what I want to share with you to this evening are two things which are not directly about uh, income producing activities, but they make a very strong and good support for our business growth. Two things I want to uh, discuss with you this evening. The first one is personal development. I'm sure all of you have heard about personal development many times in the meetings that you go to, that is very, very important. The other thing I want to talk to you about is how to deal with objections, because all of us, we come across objections almost every day of our business. So if you'll allow me, I want to share the screen with you. Okay. Uh, slideshow from current. All right. The thing I want to talk about is personal development. What is personal development? I'm sure we've heard about personal development many times in some of the meetings that we do, but it's important to understand why personal development is important. The one thing I, I, I remember uh, Jim Rohn saying many times, and I think it's very, very true is, we are not paid according to what we want or according to the work we do, we are paid according to who we are. That means that your level of income is a very accurate measure of who you have, you, you have become. And you become who you are by going through a process of personal development. Personal development simply means that you take time to become a better person. That is what it really means. And there are three aspects I want to encourage you to look at in the personal development sphere. And all those three things start with the with, with the abbreviation ask, attitude, skill, and knowledge. Why is it the, the first one is attitude? What is attitude? Attitude is your mindset, the way the way your mind is set. Um, how do you view life? Do you view life as, as an adventure that you are you are born to 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 go through? Or do you look at the challenges of life that, that define who you are? It's very important to 
develop the right mindset so that you can become successful. How do you develop the right mindset? I think the first step is, what is your why of the business? Why are you doing this business? Is it money? Is it uh, want to achieve your dreams? Is it uh, you want to make an impact? Is it you want to create a legacy for your family? Whatever it is, you need to find the reason why you are doing the business. From my experience, when people lose momentum in the business, when they lose excitement, if you scratch a little bit, they've lost sight of their dreams. Okay? So when you find that the business has become dreary, go back to your, go back to your drawing board and ask yourself, what is really my dream? What is it that I want to do? What is it that I want to achieve in this business? So find out your why. You see, our brain is a physical gray matter in our head. The mind is a, is a spiritual aspect that controls the brain. Okay? It's very important to know the distinction between the two. So when somebody says, I've made up my mind, what does it mean? It means that they have set their thought process in a specific direction. So the first one is having a good attitude. And to develop a good attitude, you need to read good books. You need to surround yourself with good people. Show me your friends, I will show you your future. In fact, go this evening before you rest, take a piece of pen, a paper, write down the names of five people you spend most of your time with. You will find, you'll find out that your income is the average of the five people you spend most of your time with. You can never rise above the people you spend most of your time with. So if you want to become more successful, look for and keep company with people who are more successful than yourself. Okay. The second thing is you need to develop the right skills. What does it mean? It means you need to learn how to do the business by actually doing those things. Skills is repetition of action until they become a habit. Skills is knowing how to do something. Uh, the, the seven essential skills of our business, uh, I think all of us know about them. How to prospect, how to invite people to look at the business, how to explain the business, how to follow up, how to get new people started, how to get customers for our business, how to uh, sell events, how to um, become a better person by constantly improving yourself, personal development. Those seven skills, if you master them, then you're on the path to becoming very successful in the business. And skills come from repetition. I mean, you can't read a book once and expect that the knowledge in the book become part of your being. You need to repeat whatever you're doing several times. The third thing is knowledge. Or well, part of the skills said is you need to learn how to present the business. This is very important. In fact, two very important things about this business is one, learn how to explain the business idea. Number two, learn how to craft your story. Learn how to tell your story. The most powerful ways for teaching, for explaining something, for capturing somebody's heart and imagination is using stories. The reason why children are very captivated by stories is because it helps them to imagine things and become part of the story. Okay, so learn those two things, telling your story, showing, explaining how the business works. The third element about personal development is knowledge. Knowledge simply means knowing what to do. Knowledge of how to get prospects, the knowledge of the business plan, the knowledge of the marketing plan, the knowledge of what products do. You need to have knowledge about our business. Get to know what the uh, policies and procedures are. Get to know how to take your steps in the business. Get to know the people in your team. Knowledge comes from interest and learning so that you can know what this business is about. Okay? So think about those three aspects. Ask, attitude, skill, and knowledge. 
And the more you spend time in these things, the better you become a person. But you see, for you to be able to do this, there are certain activities you need to get involved in. One is reading good books. I have found that if you read a book, if you read 15 minutes every day, in one year's time, you'll have read almost 20, 200 page books. And that makes a very big difference in your life. Read 15 to 20 minutes every day of a good book. If you keep doing that after a, a year, you'll have read at least 15 to 20 good books. But my other suggestion is this, select very few books to read over and over and over again until you master the principles in those books. Think and Grow Rich. How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. Uh, the Seven Skills of Becoming a Professional Network Marketer by Eric Worre. Uh, the Magic of Thinking Big by, um, what's his name? Sorry, I, forget his, I forgot his name. Um, those are very, very, Dr. David Schwartz, those are very important books for you to read over and over and over again. In fact, I would not suggest that you borrow books like that. Buy your copy and read it once, twice, three times. The fourth time, take a marker pen or, a, or something, a highlighter, anything that strikes you, read it, underline it, put it to memory. Okay? The second thing is pra practice presenting the business. When Betty and I started, I used to practice presenting the business at home. I used to practice in the car. I used to practice at, uh, during lunch at the office. Uh, Any time I got any chance, I would practice how to explain the business idea. It took me two months to be very proficient in explaining this business. Another very important thing that, I, I, from my experience, not many people do it. Take time to think. Take time to contemplate life. Take time that you, when you ha don't have any dispatch, put your phone on silent or, or just switch it off. Don't read anything. Take a notebook and a pen. Put aside half an hour or even one hour per week just to think. Think about your life. Think about where you're going to. Think about what you want to achieve. Think about the success you need to build for your family's sake. Take time to think. And then schedule time for this activity. It, it's very good to say, okay, I will read books. But have you set specific times when you read? My experience and my recommendation is your day should be very, very structured. That when somebody calls you a specific time, they know what you are doing at that time. All right? Have a precise time you wake up. Have a precise time when you do your, your prayer or meditation. Have a precise time when you exercise. Have a time when you listen to good tapes. Have a time when you uh, go through visualization, visualization of your dreams. Have specific time that you do your calling. You, have, you need to have a very structured day. If you have structured, structured activities in your day, you will find that you become more, very effective. And when you do the above things, then you create a set of good habits that will eventually lead you to success. If you do the above, they should lead to belief, and the belief should lead you to confidence. Eventually, it will lead you to influence, influencing your team, influencing your family, influencing the people in your business or people around you. Because people normally gravitate to people who are good at what they do. Okay? So personal development is very important in our business. In fact, if you want to earn more money in the business, Spend more time doing personal development than any other thing. Work harder on yourself than any other thing in your, in your life. You will see that your business will grow. Then some issues I want to recommend is some of the challenges that we go through in the business. These are obstacles that all of us, they're called landmines. People go through these activities, and if you don't watch out for them, they will trip you. <clears throat> the first one is comparison with other companies. New Life is not like any other company. Don't try to compare New Life with anything else. 
I believe Neolab is the best nutrition and network company in the world. Am I biased? Yes, I am biased, but it is based on very scientific and solid information. I have been to California where I saw where the Neolife products are manufactured, an oxygen-free facility where they make the products. It's called the protoguard process. These products we get on our tables or, or, or on our, when we eat, Neolife has spent tremendous amount of time, effort, science to make sure we've got the best products in the world. I was really fascinated and amazed when I saw everything is automated. The raw materials come in, the product comes out in a room where there is no oxygen. It means the potency, the purity, and uh, uh, the, the, the nutrient content of our products are maximum. So don't compare New Life with any other. Sometimes you can see other companies, you see, you know, the, 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 it's called the greener pasture syndrome. If you look at the other side of the fence, you always think there's a greener pasture. Remember, a green lawn, somebody is mowing that lawn. Okay. The second is multiple streams of income. By, by this, I mean, there are some people who want to do two or three network marketing businesses at the same time. It does not work. Third, multitasking. I know these days people say that if you multitask, you're going to be very successful. The thing is, multitasking only dilutes your concentration. Unitasking, I agree. It means that when you select something to do, you focus on it, do it, finish, and move to the next thing. But you won't be able to do many things effectively at the same time. The, the, the fourth one is called the banker syndrome. Uh, this is a personal advice to people who are in the business. If you're new, if you're in the business for a long time, avoid giving money to distributors in your team because it creates a very uh, difficult situation in relationships. Avoid giving money to distributors. Charlie used to tell us that I will not take away your challenges. Your challenges are the best thing that will help you grow. Number five is a product expert syndrome. It simply means that we sometimes, we may think that for us to be successful, we need to be an expert in the products. We need to know every scientific detail. No, you just need to know the basic elements of our products. That is it. Number six, family and friends. These are sometimes you really get challenges from this. It's called a prophet in his home syndrome. The people who believe you the least are the people in your family or your friends. They have known you. You've never succeeded in anything. And here you are. You're telling them about a business that will make them millionaires. They're going to become very successful. They're likely not to believe you. So if it happens to you, don't worry. It's part of life. It's called a prophet in his home syndrome. Okay. Number seven, work with the willing. Um, sometimes you want to push people so hard that you eventually become tired. Work with the people who are willing to work. How do you know who they are? They seek your advice. They attend training. They ask questions. They attend meetings. They ask for support. They tell you, look, so Pascal, I've got three or four uh, prospects that I want to speak to. Can you help me? Okay. Number eight. Do not give your prospects too much information. The prospects get overloaded with information and they don't make a decision. Do not give your prospect too much information. It confuses them. Give them basic information on how to build the business. Let them decide. When a prospect asks you so many questions, tell them, look, I know your question is very important. I would like to address it. That will be addressed during the training session when you grow in the business. The thing, important thing is make a decision to get started in the business. And the last one, shortcuts. There are no shortcuts. If there are shortcuts, it should be the highway. There are no shortcuts in our business, just simple, plain, hard work.
talking to people every day about our business, every day about our products. And then objections, handling objections. Um, objections come all the time. These are the most uh, common ones I've met. First one, I don't have money to start. I'm sure those who are uh, attending this meeting can say that you at least one or two people you've spoken to about the business will tell you I don't have money to start. All right? A lot of people have this. The question is, when people say they don't have money to start, ask them a question. All right, you don't have money to start. But if I tell you that outside there is a, a brand new Toyota that if you go and look for the money to start, I'll give you the keys. Most will say, yes, of course, I'm going to borrow money and get it as long as I don't get it. You see, what they don't realize is that the business can actually make them enough money to buy that Toyota. The thing is, they don't have sufficient motivation. They don't have sufficient drive to be able to build the business. So when people say they don't have money to start, in my opinion, it's an excuse. Betty and I started the business with no money. I wrote a check. I asked my bank manager to honor it because there was no money in our account and it went to overdraft. That's how Betty and I started. So when people don't say they don't have money, it's an excuse. Number two, they don't have time. The same thing, excuse. You see, I don't care who you are. All of us have 24 hours every day. How do you create time to do build the business? Because you allocate time. If you think the business is important, you'll allo allocate time. To we always allocate time to things we know are important. Third, third, third objection, products are too expensive. The question I normally ask pro people who say the products are too expensive, I said, yes, the product is expensive because they're good. And by the way, which, is a, which, which car would you like to drive? A Toyota or a Mercedes-Benz? Most people say Mercedes. Why? Because it's a good car. That's why it's expensive. Our products are not expensive. They are very well priced. Okay? In fact, in South Africa, we, uh, the Eagle team has done a price comparison between our products and the ones in the supermarket. It's an excellent document. Whichever market you're in, you, you can actually do a similar thing. Do a price comparison between our products and the ones we have in, this, in, in, the, in, in the normal market. Number four, it's a pyramid scheme. I, I, I find this thing really sometimes when people say it's a pyramid scheme, is as if a, a, a pyramid is something, it, it's um, dishonored. I'm a civil engineer. I know a little bit about geometry. The most stable structure is a pyramid. It's very stable. A pyramid scheme is actually an illegal activity. Any country, a pyramid scheme is an illegal activity. If you want to know the, the difference between a pyramid scheme and a legitimate network marketing business, you need to observe, you need to look for three things. Number one, a pyramid scheme, there is no product or service offered to the public. Network marketing, there's a product or service offered to the public in return for the money they pay. Number two, a pyramid scheme does not, is not registered as a business anywhere and there is no regulatory body that uh, regulates the, the, the scheme. A legitimate network marketing business, near life is registered with the direct selling association and therefore it's the watchdog, is the one that regulates our industry. Number three, in a pyramid scheme, the people who join first or who start the whole scheme are the ones who always win and between six, six and 18 months, it collapses. Why? It's illegal, it's not sustainable. That's a pyramid scheme. A network marketing business has, a, is, has longevity. And two, the person who works the hardest in network marketing in our business becomes very successful. Betty and I have three or four distributors in our team, or five, I think, who earn more than we do. Why? Because they've built a better structure. Okay? Difference between pyramid scheme and network marketing business. Number five, I want to think about it. Really? This business is very simple. What we do is we create a network of people who use products. That's all. 
when somebody says, I want to think about it, what they're saying, I'm not sure, or um, I am afraid I may not succeed, or I don't believe in this. I want to think about it is also an excuse. There's really very simple, few things to think about in our business. If you show somebody, this is what we do. Neolife makes these products. We take the products to the different consumers and we get an income from Neolife. That is simply the business. Then we get other people to do the same. We build a network of people who move products from Neolife to different consumers. That is what we do. There's nothing to think about anymore, right? Number six, I'm not a selling type. Every single human being sells something. Okay. Um, I went. I went to Betty Dawa in Nairobi, Kenya, in end of November, early December, and I met quite a number of excellent, our uh, excellent distributors. Uh, some we've known for a long time. Some we've known for a short time. Um. And I met, I met Ann Gao and Mangati Gao, excellent couple. You see, the reason why Ann married Mangati is because she sold herself successfully to him. And he sold himself successfully to her. That is it. Anybody who is married successfully sold themselves to their spouse. Anybody who is a teacher is selling ideas to their students. Anybody who is an engineer is selling his services to whoever is buying. All of us, at one point or another, is selling something, but we just don't realize. So when people say they are not a selling type, it's just an excuse. All of us, at some point in life, are selling something. And by the way, if you don't know how to sell, if you don't learn how to sell, you'll never be successful as a business person. Business only occurs when a product is sold. That's it. I don't care what product it is, whether it's oil, whether it's whatever it is, business occurs when something is sold. So all of us are selling something all the time, every day. All right. So how do you handle objections? Objections are really lack of information. Second, hear them out without interrupting. Listen to what they are saying. And also listen to the underlying tones. Listen to what they are not saying also. Repeat to, to them to ensure you under, uh, understand what they are saying. So repeat to them to see if you understand what they are saying. Then use what is called, use the feel, felt, found rule. For example, you go like this. John, I, I feel the way, uh, I feel what you are saying because I felt that way when I also started. But I found out that with more information, I became very successful. I found out that uh, when I made a decision, things became clearer for me. And then the last thing, use the four closing questions. When you have a prospect who has seen the business, ask the following four questions. Question number one, did the business presentation or the business make sense? Most people say yes, or if they say no, ask them, what aspect didn't you understand? If they say yes, go to the next question. What did you like most about the business? Is it the product, the business side, or a little bit of both? All right. The third question, do you see yourself becoming a distributor with, with us? Or do you, yourself, do you see yourself joining and becoming successful with us? If the answer is yes to all those, go to the last question which sometimes we are afraid of asking people. Ask the people, okay, when do you, this is the application form. When can you get the money to get started? Ask the question directly because most people are not very effective in making decisions. Help them to make a decision. If they don't have enough money, say, okay, pay a deposit, then you can look for the rest of money and get started. All right? So ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you to embrace the word no in our business. The word no in our business is very, very important. Why? Because it is the, it's the step towards a yes. Sometimes we think that when you speak to a prospect, yes is on the left and no is on the right or vice versa. No. When you speak to a prospect, 
no is a stepping stone to a yes. So you need to embrace the no that people say so that you can get to the yes. The average person says yes after five or six or seven times. I read it somewhere, but when I look back at our business, most people say yes after five or six or seven times. So take advantage, embrace the word no. Embrace when people say the business doesn't work, get excited about it because maybe the business is not for them. I remember a prospect I was speaking to quite a while and they kept arguing. So I stopped listening and said, you know, maybe this thing is not for you. And they were completely taken aback and the attitude changed. So um, let's avoid begging people to join our business. For me, for me and Betty, it was a great privilege that we were shown this business. Don't beg people to join. You're doing them a great favor. They don't know it now, but when they join, they become a director, a Ruby, uh, when you become a president's team member, they will thank you. So don't beg people to join the business. Show them the business, guide them to make a, a decision, and when they join, hold their hand and help them to grow your, their business. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank all of you very much for attending this session with us. I wish you the very best. Uh, March is still a way to go. Keep speaking to your prospect to achieve your monthly goals. Thank you, good night, and God bless.